G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam, and for today's video, we're taking you through the rows lookup function in server-side JavaScript, showing you how to use it, and show you how it's a little bit different to the lookup rows function in server-side JavaScript and Anscript. You can find the documentation for the server-side JavaScript rows lookup function in the programmatic languages, server-side JavaScript, and the data extension functions for rows. Now note that rows lookup is slightly different to the lookup rows function. The rows lookup uses the core library under the rows function subset to perform a row level lookup, while the lookup rows function is actually a platform function that uses a slightly different method to retrieve the rows. However, they are still very, very similar and they can be used somewhat interchangeably depending on how you approach your code. So let's step through the example code and show you how it works. What we'll do is we'll jump into Marketing Cloud and take this code with us and go try it out for ourselves. So over in Marketing Cloud in our Content Builder, I have my testing content block ready to go where I can jump in and paste my copy to code. Now one thing to be aware of when you're using documentation for server-side JavaScript is to always take note of where you took that documentation from. Now you may notice this function does not use the platform syntax. The reason for that is this code was found under the JavaScript syntax data extension functions. We did not navigate all the way down to the platform functions. And because of this, we do have to load in the core library first for these functions to work. So to do this, we have to navigate back up to our JavaScript syntax guide. And we can scroll down and find our platform loading code. You'll find it here with the library name and the library version. We want our platform core one library. So you can copy that code directly, go back into our content block and paste in that platform load core. This now enables these functions to work because we now have our core library loaded. Now our first act uh, activity here is the data extension initialization. And we have to provide a data extension key. We can't use the DE name, we have to use the key. So we can jump into our contact builder. I've got my external key ready to go. We can copy that and paste it into this initialization function. Now with that, I'm gonna call this variable DE for the data extension that I've initialized which of course is my sample rows DE. Next, I can then reference that DE as an object. So we can make sure this is now the same wording for DE. And in fact, for good naming conventions, I might use the word sample rows, just so we can distinguish between data extensions and my functions. So sample rows, that's the value. We're now going to navigate sample rows through our rows lookup function, looking up a value where it matches a value. So what can we look up? Well, we'll go into our records and let's have a look. Let's use email opt-in equals true. So we can jump into here. And for my field, it's gonna be email opt-in. We want to return values that are equal to true. So now we should have a data variable returned for all the rows in sample rows that are looked up based on my initialization of that data extension. Now, of course, I can't just simply write out those rows because that's now an object. I do have to stringify it. But one cool thing is, because we've actually now got our platform core loaded, I don't have to go down and use my platform string functions. I can use my utility functions directly inside my main function set. And these include my string functions to stringify and to write. You may notice, of course, this function's a lot shorter. There is no um, platform response prefix. The stringify, same thing, there is no prefix, just the word stringify. So it makes your code a lot neater once you have that library loaded. So let's do those two things. Let's write and stringify the result of my rows lookup. Now to do this, I of course can do a write function. Inside the write function, I can do a stringify function. And inside that stringify, I can of course stringify the returned data. So let's try that out. Go save, I can then refresh my cloud page, which has the lookup to my content block. And there it is. I've now got a whole series of values being returned inside of this object. Now, one cool thing you may notice, which you can achieve through the rows lookup function, but not the lookup rows function, is you actually get returned the custom object key for this row inside this payload. I think it's pretty cool. But either way, we now have this stringified JSON payload returned from our lookup row function, or our row lookup function. So with that, of course, if we didn't stringify our data, we could address it. Now, let's just choose a random value to address inside our data. We, of course, could choose our data. We could choose the first row or first object inside that data. And what can we return? We can return the ID field. So let's try to return the ID field from our data set there with a write function. 
Let's try and return that back. And there we have it. That should have been the first row. So sample rows with a 7141D. 7141D is Astro. That is the first row that came back. Perfect. So as you can see, the rows lookup function works in a really similar way to the lookup rows function. The key difference being you have to initialize that data extension using the data extensions key. But once you've done that, you can then do a lot more functions that are all built into that rows subset, such as adding, removing, retrieving, and updating, which I'll cover in separate videos and I'll link them in the description below. If you enjoyed today's walkthrough of the rows lookup function, then please let me know in the comments below and with a big thumbs up on the video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can notify when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.